and welcome to my review of the Radio Oddity GD77. This is my first foray into DMR radio. I thought I'd pick this uh, unit up. I got it cheap, well, relatively cheap, £55 delivered here in the UK. Uh, let's see what we get inside the box. It, um, it feels nice in the hand anyway from, from first off and um, it comes with the usual assortment of stuff. I just took it out of the box. This one uh, comes with a programming cable which is which is useful and uh, a charging base which of course is the norm these days. You'll see from the plastic um, it, it, um, it's nice and grippy, it's got a textured feel to it. It feels a reasonable weight, not too heavy. A nice clear display, backlit, an emergency function button on the top and two other function buttons on the side. Uh, it's got dual band, um, VHF and UHF and it operates in tier 1 and tier 2 modes which is simplex and also it's available to um, you can set it up to be operatable on the DMR repeater network as well if you get the um, UK code uh, plug which is basically a list of channels programmed into the radio. So it um, sits there and once it's in charging position, it shine, the light shines red and um, completion of charge, it shines green. And it's, it's fairly stable and sturdy and the, although it's a USB to DC lead, don't be confused, it ha it's a, uh, a 12 volt power supply to charge this unit. Uh, it's a 7.4 volt, 2.2 amp hour lithium ion, lithium polymer battery. Um, of a reasonable weight as you saw. Comes with a programming cable uh, which doesn't seem to assign a COM port. There's the USB lead which I showed you about so don't get confused and think you can charge it off USB you can't. You have to charge it from this power supply here or an equivalent adapter to get your 12 volts there which plugs into the back. Um, it's a female SMA on top of the radio so you might need an adapter if you want to hook this up to an external antenna. It's got these feature buttons on the side and a single PTT on the top. The, the top is a volume adjust and there's your battery clip in the base. It's a, overall a very well made, nicely made radio. A more robust um, feeling and looking than the, the Baofeng radios. It also uh, it's just plugged into the uh, my hub there. It also comes with a belt clip. I always like to fit belt clips. This is quite a generous and sturdy belt clip on this radio. It's just secured down by two screws in the back of the radio is a, is a norm. And it's got a, quite a good span so it should go around a, a belt and a, and a fairly thick uh, pair of trousers if you like. There you go. It's got a good range to it. The base is a little bit fiddly to get the radio into the base. You'll see the clip, like on some of the Baofangs, the clip doesn't foul the charger as it sits in the base. It's the Kenwood style three and a half and two and a half for programming. And it, like I say, it comes with its own lead. Now, one thing that you will have to do um, is what, what I recommend is you install the software that comes with it, but then go and get the latest firmware and software down off of the Radio Oddity website. Uh, it's uh, it's shown here on this uh, video. Um, go and download that, but first off, make sure you can read and save a file off the radio first. So do that first. Actually, make sure you 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 can actually download read from the radio first, and then you're going to need to put the radio into a firmware upgrade mode. And you do that by um, pressing buttons on the side of the radio, which I'll show you in just a moment there. So download the latest firmware and the latest software. The software won't work until you actually um, upgrade the firmware. So you install the software, as I've just said, on from the CD that comes with the radio. Install that first. Read from the radio so that, and then save that to a file so you have a backup. Now to put it into upgrade mode, you push and hold these two buttons in and turn the radio on at the same time. And it'll, uh, the screen will be, will be blank and then you'll have a green, just a green light coming on on the top. And what that will do is put it into update mode and it will then let you um, uh, upgrade the, the actual firmware of the radio. 
Not a bad little manual, I haven't really read through it and done much with it. Uh, the box has, uh, it's a textured box, quite, quite well made. If you want to read any of the details, just pause this, I, I flick through it. Right, onto power then. Um, the, the radio quotes it as having a five watts of output power, which we will assume is going to be on the, the VHF setting. So uh, we can see this is on the VHF setting, we're getting four watts there forward power, so not far off the, the claimed 5 watts. We switched it to UHF and we're now getting 3. So it's not too bad, that's quite reasonable. Um, I can live with that. The battery is fully charged. May get a bit more power after a few cycles of the battery, but I'm um, not, uh, not too sure, but we shall try. Um, so um, we'll take the radio out to the usual locations and um, we'll test it up against uh, Perhaps another, uh, maybe a Baofeng radio, and we'll see how it how it compares, and we'll uh, we'll try and get a test done of the digital audio quality as well. So uh, let's go out on the road and see what it does. This is G7LNK portable. Is this frequency in use, please? This is G7LNK portable with the Baofeng GT3 at location A, about three miles. This is G7 LNK portable with Baofeng GT3, a location A approximately 3 miles. This is G7 LNK portable with the radio oddity uh, GD77 at location A approximately 3 miles. The quick brown flocks jumped over the lazy dog, testing the radio in analog. This is G7 LNK portable, G7 LNK portable with the radio oddity GD77 at location A, approximately three miles from base, testing. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna, we didn't bother doing the digital either because I've got to do a bit more prattling around to get that sorted. But we'll go over to location B and we'll test both the radios analog and then I'll get my assistant to switch over the, the antenna system so we can record it digital via the SDR and we'll also record it digital via another one of these uh, radio oddity, I never said that right, GD77s in digital mode so we'll see what that sounds like. Right so let's go over to location B and see what see what happens. Right we're at location B it should be a bit quieter even though it's absolutely pitch black out here um, so I'm going to take both the radios out again the GD77 and the uh, the Baofeng GT3 and we'll try and see what signals we get out of this location. Um, so again I'm not going to film myself on the radio, I'm just going to record it back at base. So let's go and see what we can do. This frequency in use please, this is Golf 7 Lima November Kilo Portable. This is G7 LNK Portable at location B, about 6 miles, location B, about 6 miles of the Baofeng GT3 Mark II with the Baofeng radio, approximately six miles. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. This is G7 LNK portable, G7 LNK portable. With the GD77, the radio is the GD77. The GD77 at location B, approximately six miles. UHF test, Golf 7 Lima November Kilo with the GD77, location B, six miles. UHF test five four three two one one two three four five. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. 
This is G7 LN Pay, Golf 7 Lima November Kilo Portable with the GD77 at location B. Testing a digital mode, testing a DMR GD77, G7 LN Pay Portable at location B, approximately 6 miles. The big brown fox that jumped over the lazy dog. This is being recorded on an SDR with a computer. Golf 7 Lima November Kilo Portable testing. This is G7LNK Portable, Golf 7 Lima, November Kilo Portable with the GD77 at location B, testing the DMR function, recording directly to a Tauscam um, audio recorder, Golf 7 Lima, November Kilo Portable, using a pure DMR digital mode, testing 54321-12345, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. G7LNK Portable, Golf 7 Lima, November Kilo Portable, testing the Radio Oddity GD77, the Golf December 77, 77 DMR Radio, testing at location B, approximately 6 miles from home base, recording back at home base on uh, another GD77 radio, plugged into a Tascam audio recorder, testing 54321, one, two, three, four, five. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Right, I'm hoping that was a successful test of this radio. Um, I'm going to do a bit more testing like that in digital mode on the way back to base, um, just to see how it performs. Um, mobile, uh, digital mobile, if you like, see what the breakup's like. And then um, when I get back to the shack, uh, we'll do a quick roundup of what I think of this. I mean, I've only had it a day or, or two, and there's lots that it can do, messaging and all sorts of things. Um, so, but really, I'm not going to cover that in this in this video. Maybe in another video, but I just wanted to get this video out there just to see and show you guys what this, you know, really affordable entry into DMR radio can do for you if, if that's the way that you want to go. Um, so, we'll do a little bit of mobile testing, get back to the shack, and then we'll take it from there. G7 LNK Mobile with the Radio Oddity GD77 uh, testing the DMR settings on the radio according to an analog recorder Golf 7 Lima November Kilo testing G7 LNK Mobile G7 LNK Mobile with the Radio Oddity GD77 uh, testing the DMR settings on the radio Recording to an analog recorder, Golf 7 Lima November Kilo testing. GD77 DMR stroke analog dual band radio testing. This is G7 LNK, Golf 7 Lima November Kilo testing the GD77 mobile. The, the uh, radio quantity GD77 DMR stroke analog dual band radio testing. GD77 is a great budget entry into DMR. Um, I can't really fault it, really, to be honest, for the money that I paid. Um, like I say, it's early days, really, with the radio for the radio at the moment with me. Um, but I shall use it over the next week or two and then report back and let you guys know how I've got on with it. Um, don't think, don't listen too much into the, particularly the SDR recording, because um, that. Um, I'm not sure I've only just set that up on, on the SDR so I don't know if I've got that quite right so it, but the actual the audio received back from the other radio the other GD77 sounded pretty decent and it probably I probably had the recording levels a little bit high so it might have been a bit peaky through the Tascam but overall radio to radio it sounded really really good so I can definitely recommend this as your entry into DMR um, I shall see how we get on um, putting the uh, the code pack into it uh, however there really there really isn't much uh, uh, there isn't really a, a DMR repeater that's uh, a close enough for me to really use the, the DMR repeater function too much um, so I bought another one of these radios for a family member who's also a radio ham and uh, we should have a bit of fun uh, playing around with these and then uh, if I've got anything to report I'll report back but overall I, I think you should go out and get one of these um, it didn't perform quite as well as a cheap Baofeng on VHF, but it, it does uh, digital as well. So um, and it has that up its sleeve, and um, I think you you would probably punch much further in poorer conditions in digital than you would do in analog. Anyway, 
I hope this is making you feel too seasick. Um, please tune in to the next video. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you've enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a like. I'll be announcing a winner for the Zastone V77 on the next video. I just want to give a few more people some time to uh, comment. So if you want to win, give me a chance of winning a, couple, a pair of the Zastone V77s, just enter the competition in the last video that I posted. Okay, if you have been, thanks ever so much for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.